Ignition, brought to you by Pioneer's new Kuro. Notre Dame coaching lineage front and center. Charlie Wise, the present curator of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, today strategizing against Tyrone Willingham, his predecessor, now the head coach of the Washington Huskies. Welcome everyone to the seventh meeting all time between Notre Dame and Washington. Washington looking for its first win of the season. Notre Dame meanwhile coming in at four and two. And as always in the Northwest, the pastoral beauty and the bucolic scenes really making it one of the most unique scenes in all of college football. Hello everybody, I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. Welcome to the Emerald City. Aboard the 97 foot from front to back, they call this vessel the Big Dog. And Bob, there aren't many places in college football. Yeah. You can captain your vessel along Lake Washington, anchor, take a taxi boat ashore, and watch the Huskies play some football. Mark, just look. I mean, this is one of the most beautiful settings in all of college football. But we both know for a coach, beauty is judged on one thing, and that's winning. Unfortunately for Tyrone Willingham and the Huskies, those wins have been tough to come by. Over the last eight games, Washington is 0-8. On the other hand, Notre Dame is 6-2. In reality, Mark, these are two programs headed in a different direction. Notre Dame still looking for its first road victory this season. They're 4-2, Bob, but their offense continues to transform. These aren't your dad's uh, Notre Dame fighting Irish. Well, Mark, you're exactly right. At halftime of the Michigan State game, Charlie Weiss made a decision. Let's spread the field. Let's throw it every day. Down. I think that was the right decision for two reasons. Number one, it gives them the best chance to win right now. And the second reason, it fits their personnel. They have two young, dynamic receivers in Golden Tate and Michael Floyd. Both these guys are tremendous playmakers on the outside. The running back, Armando Allen, really kind of a hybrid wide receiver. Running back plays great in open spaces. And Jimmy Clausen, the quarterback, one of the most hyped young quarterbacks in the country coming up the, out of high school has shown us the last three weeks why everyone was so excited about him. Mark, I think he has a chance to be a star in this offense. Great statistics so far on the season. Meanwhile, for Washington, a daunting task lies ahead for them, but all week long, they've talked about winning one for their head coach, Tyrone Willingham. We'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this. on dry land and Tyrone Willingham has been deflecting a lot of the attention from himself and onto his team as has Charlie Weiss the head coach of Notre Dame for most of the week Charlie Weiss with bigger concerns outside of the storyline about him and Tyrone going head to head he's just trying to get his team's first road win of the season as Notre Dame looks to make it seven straight wins against Washington the Huskies will Except the opening kickoff, that's Jordan Polk, number 82. So important for Washington. I mean, they've been feeling bad a long time, Mark. They're 2 and 15 over the last 17 games, 0 and 6 this season. Important every game for a team to get off to a fast start, but this Husky team has to have some success early. Notre Dame coming off of a bye week. Prior to that, a win against North, actually a loss against North Carolina. At Chapel Hill, this is going to be Polk from the eight-yard line. Polk, a former high school state champion in track and field, out to the 31-yard line for hit starting quarterback Ronnie Fouch. As we take a look at our impact players for the Huskies, Fouch making his fourth career start. And tailback Terrence Daly, a true freshman, gave Washington a spark last week against Oregon State at 102 yards. And DeAndre Goodwin, Bob, a deep ball threat, the fastest of the wide receivers. He gave them a long ball threat and came up with a couple of long receptions a week ago. First down and 10 from the 32-yard line. Fouch gets risen quickly incomplete at the 33-yard line to Terrence Daly. As we take a look at the Husky 
starting lineup. Fouch the quarterback daily at tailback. Last week he had the team's first 100 yard rusher of the season, believe it or not. Obviously, Ronnie Fouch starting for Jake Locker, who went down the fourth game of the season against Stanford, blocking on a reverse of all things, but that took away a big chunk of the Husky offense. Fouch flushed outside. He can run a little bit. Not quite the runner that Blocker is, but he's knocked out of bounds at the 34 yard line, picked up a pair on the play. Herring making the stop, along with Kyle McCarthy. It'll be third down and long coming up for the Huskies on this their opening drive. This Notre Dame defense about 48 percent of the time they're going to blitz mostly zone blitz where they come after you with an extra linebacker and play zone coverage. So let's see right here if Notre Dame holds true statistically in blitzes. Empty formation for Fouch. They bring a little pressure off the edge. The pass is incomplete intended for Aguilar and no flag on the play. Rayshon McNeil there to break it up for the Irish and now. Well they did heat up the young quarterback. Let's take a look right here. Ooh, good shot Harrison Smith coming on the backside close to being a little bit late right there. Tim Lapino the Husky offensive coordinator telling us in our meetings yesterday they had to make sure that he doesn't get hit too much. Punt bounces at the 33. It's going to be down to the 38 yard line where it'll be first down and 10 for quarterback Jimmy Clausen of Notre Dame and Clausen with 14 touchdown passes versus eight picks on the season. And I think two of the most dynamic young wide receivers in the entire country Golden Tate and Michael Floyd both these guys on the outside remind me back in the days of Stovall and Samarja for Notre Dame when that ball goes up in the air particularly on a deep ball you just expect Expect those guys to come down with the catch. Yeah, Tate a sophomore, Floyd just a freshman. First down and ten for Notre Dame. Single back formation. This is Armando Allen with a nice hole over the left side, and he gets the first down on the first play of the game for the Irish. Nate Williams making the stop. Allen, a 5'10 sophomore out of Miami Lakes, Florida. Charlie Weiss told me before the game. The plan is to spread Washington out in a lot of spread formations, but run the football just so they can settle down and see what Washington's plan is. They expect a lot of blitz on Jimmy Clausen, so they want to spread him and run the ball here early. Clausen, meanwhile, has set career highs yardage wise passing in the last three consecutive games. First and ten, they run it again. This is Allen. Allen brought down after a gain of about two yards. He's the team's leading rusher with almost 300 on the season. You look at this Washington starting defense at the top of the screen. They have struggled, and that's putting it lightly. 115th in scoring defense, but maybe the biggest concern, 119th dead last in pass efficiency defense. It's a defense that's giving up 41 points per game. Second down and eight for Notre Dame. Allen the lone back beside Jimmy Clausen. Clausen swings it complete. That's Floyd and Floyd the freshman is off. And the turbos kicked in. Michael Floyd. Touchdown Notre Dame. That didn't take long. A 51 yard bolt of lightning across the turf. And just a key block by the right offensive tackle, Sam Young, out there in open space, set him free down that sideline. Jimmy Clausen hit him on a quick hitch, and boy, Bob, Michael Floyd, you see why they just rave about his talent. As he took it the distance, the extra point is good. And take a look on this replay. I think you're going to get to see Sam Young right there. And one yards, Michael, pardon me, yeah, Michael Floyd with a career-long 51-yard touchdown reception. And Jimmy Clausen with his 15th touchdown pass of the year. Floyd doesn't talk a lot, but his game is doing some big talk right now. Well, we talked about Washington needed to get off to a quick start. Probably worst case scenario for Tyrone Willingham. 
Newby Polk again this time from the seven yard line and chopped down at the 21 yard line. And let's take one more look at the key play yeah. on this touchdown. Things that don't show up in the stats. Watch big Sam Young at 330 pounds, the right offensive tackle. Anytime you throw these wide receiver screens, it's a group effort. You see big Sam Young, who started his first game as a freshman against Georgia Tech at Notre Dame, making that key block right there. Giving a little bit of love to the old lineman, huh? <laughs> first and 10 coming back the other way. Ronnie Fouch in his second offensive series. They hit her right up the middle in a nice game that time by Terrence Daly. Picked up about seven on the play. We talked to the Washington coaches yesterday, Tim Lapano, the offensive coordinator. They really feel like they can move the football on Notre Dame. If there's one thing you feel you can do, maybe run the football. Notre Dame giving up 136 yards a game. In rushing defense. Second down and two out of the shotgun. Fouch. And there's some heat. And sacked back at the 22 yard line. Pat Coots there to make the stop on the play for the Irish. Along with Harrison Smith, number 22. That's the team's eighth sack of the season. Yeah, Pat Coons is a playmaker. You're going to see him right here at nose guard. He beats Juan Garcia, the sixth year senior from Washington. Right there, 96 Coons. I mean, they just basically turned him loose right there. A loss of six yards on the play. Third and long. Pouch completed the 26 yard line to DeAndre Goodwin. He's been the most prominent and productive of the Husky receivers so far, but it's short of the first down. Fourth, another three and out for the Huskies. Confidence. Confidence, such a huge issue with any football team, but the lack of confidence on this Washington team is just obvious. Their last game, they came out on the first play offensively and had a procedure penalty. Now, their first series defensively here, they give up a touchdown. And this is not a great punt by Jared Ballman, but he gets a very auspicious roll all the way down to the 30 yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Notre Dame coming back the other way after the 43 yard punt. Jimmy Clausen threw a 51 yard touchdown pass to Michael Floyd on the previous series. We'll see what they do when we come back right after this. ESPN's college football primetime. Brought you by the Volkswagen Mutant, the only minivan in America with German engineering. Oh, the salmon in Seattle is unrivaled. This is how they slice it up in the great Northwest. First down and 10, and Clausen slicing up that secondary at Washington a few moments ago. Jimmy Clausen, a sophomore, played his high school football at Oates Christian in Westlake Village, California. He was 42 and 0 in his career there. Allen into the boundary, the short side of the field. He's rocked out of bounds. As we go down, actually, we're going to stay right here. A seven yard pickup, and uh, man, that was a huge hit by number 23, Mespin Forrester, came out of his shoes. Yeah, Mespin Forrester, who was a safety, they moved him to corner. Close. Good no call situation, though. That was a lick right there. Second down and three coming up. Again, you see Notre Dame in that four wide look with a big tight end, Rudolph flexed. Allen again gets the first down and then some, but there are a couple of late flags thrown on that far side of the field, right around the 40 yard line. Holding on the offense, number 77. 10 yard penalty, second down. Been a tough year with injuries for the Huskies, Todd Harris. Mark, that is the understatement of the year. You know it's bad when guys are getting injured before the game starts, and that's exactly what happened to number 93, Sinio Calametti, the outstanding freshman from right here in Seattle. Going through warm-up drills, went down, hurt his knee. Now, the staff says it's categorized as a strained knee. They said they don't think he's torn anything in it, but he's done something to it. Needless to say, Calametti is starter out for the game. Oh boy, a tough break for Coach Willingham and defensive coordinator. Donatel. Notice Washington playing a lot of three-man front 
normally a four down team but starting out in a 30 package one defensive lineman short on an already thin defense second and 11 Clawson going upstairs for Grant has Grant and he makes the grab at the 37 yard line Michael Floyd checked that with the catch his second long one of the game I think the best thing Notre Dame does offensively is throw the deep ball. You know, last year, the entire season, they had six throws of over 30 yards. Already this season, they have 13 throws of over 30 yards. So they're a team that throws the football down the field. Uh, that one going for 32 in the first down. Clawson with time again. He wisely throws it away incomplete. Clawson very good at distributing those passes amongst several different players. Well, and the exciting thing about this group, I mean, they're all young. Golden Tate, a sophomore, was a running back in high school. Michael Floyd, a true freshman, highly recruited. Armando Allen, a sophomore. Kyle Rudolph, the tight end, at about six foot seven, is a freshman out of Cincinnati. And Jimmy Clawson is a sophomore. So the future is bright with these skilled players on offense. Second down and 10 coming up for Notre Dame. Clawson over the middle, and he's picked off at the 10. Williams. And Nate Williams takes it out to the 33-yard line. The Huskies come up with a big play and a late flag. And it'll be interesting what this flag is. Pass interference. On the defense. Yeah. Number six. 15 to McDowell. Automatic. Bronze McDowell is the perpetrator on the play. Let's go back and take a look. I mean, obviously the flag came in late. Tries to go to Deval Camaro down the field. Wow. They were locked up a little bit. Vonzel McDowell with that left arm. It looks like Camaro almost had a grab of McDowell's arm. Nonetheless, it's going to be first down and 10 for the Irish at the 24 yard line. Tyrone Willingham's team extremely young. They play more underclassmen than any other team in the nation than Arkansas. We'll see how those young guys respond here. First down and 10 for Notre Dame. Allen on the stretch play and he brought down at the 23 as we go back to Wendy Nix in the studio. Mark, thank you. There's just too much going on not to offer a reminder. On ABC, it's that big showdown in the Big Ten. No score with Penn State visiting Ohio State. And over on ESPN, the number two Alabama Crimson Tide up 6-3 over Tennessee. And, of course, you guys holding down the fort. Washington looking for their first win of the year right here on the Deuce. All right, Wendy. What a great game in Columbus, Ohio tonight, huh? The Penn State Nittany Lions. Penn State looking to run the table, set themselves up for a national championship bid. Second down and 10 for Notre Dame. Armando Allen down to the 20 yard line as the Notre Dame Fighting Irish Pop continue to pound away. Forrester making the stop on the play, and Jimmy Johnson looks to score a second straight victory. Put a little distance between himself and fellow championship contenders Greg Bickle, Jeff Burton, and Carl Edwards. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continuing. Atlanta on ABC Sunday. Coverage begins with NASCAR countdown at 1 Eastern. Here's a look at your sprint for the cup. No fights this week in NASCAR in the pits. No chokings, no hands on throats. Nice to see. No, uh, no road rage. Yeah, Eric Olson, the offensive guard. Staten Island, New York, down on the play. Bob, let's talk about the attack that Notre Dame has used so far in the last three games, especially they've thrown it a lot here. They kind of changed their character. a little yeah, bit. And I think that's the beauty of Charlie Weiss and his offense. And I, th I think it really goes back to Bill Belichick and what Bill, Bill Belichick does on defense with the New England Patriots. I mean, they really change their game plan weekly specific to the defense they're playing both personnel wise and scheme wise. And they've got enough tools in that toolbox to be able to come out and throw it every week like they did last week against North Carolina or 
tonight, spread it and run it. So he's a guy that's not afraid to change week to week to what he thinks gives him the best chance to win. And not many coaches yeah. do that. I give him a lot of credit. Well, I say disciple of the Parcells Belichick school. Notre Dame has run the ball six times, passed it three times. Third down and seven. On the reverse. This is Tate. Tate. Touchdown. Golden again. Golden Tate, the 5'11 sophomore. A 21 yard sprint almost untouched. Well, two things. First, you're going to see 66, Daniel Tionesi miss the tackle, and then you're going to see a block by Sam Young again, number 74. Golden Tate with arguably the best name in college football, and the wheels to prove it. His first rushing touchdown of the season and of his career. And Notre Dame out in front quickly here, 14 to nothing on the banks of Lake Washington. We'll be right back after this. The chase for the Sprint Cup continues in Atlanta tomorrow at 1 Eastern on ABC. The generation that swore it would never get old didn't. Welcome to the summer of life. Now there's an official hair treatment of the summer of your life. New Tattoo Gray from Just For Men. Let you keep a little gray. Works gradually. Just comb in, rinse. <laughs> Never trust anybody over 90. Keep a little gray with New Touch of Gray. Scientific tests show that when one drinks Dr. Pepper slowly, one can truly... With under eight minutes to go here in the first quarter, Golden Tate capping a seven-play, 70-yard drive and just 2.43 on the clock. You know, basically, we talked about two dynamic young wide receivers. Yeah. We've seen both of them, but also both of them have been untouched on their two big touchdowns. Both again get a try from the three-yard line for the Huskies. Flag down in the field already, and Polk pushed out of bounds just beyond the 20. During return, holding number 37. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the infraction. First down. What went right on that touchdown? Well, I'm going to show you what went right for Notre Dame and what went wrong for Washington. Watch Sam Young, the right tackle. Keep your eyes on him. And then keep your eyes first, though, on the defensive end, Tio Nessie from Washington. Tio Nessie has a shot right here, but watch Sam Young out in the open field. Boom! That is a great block. And he lets you know it by putting those <laughs> arms up for a touchdown. But that's two tonight yeah. for Sam Young out in the open field. That was a great block. That's 330 pounds of man moving pretty quickly. Between the tackles, it's Terrence Daly stopped up by Maurice Crum. Daly last week, albeit in that loss against Oregon State here at home at Husky Stadium, becoming the team's first 100-yard rusher of the season. That really underscores the problems they've had moving the ball both on the ground and through the air this year. Well, he gave the fans a little spark last week. But I'll tell you something, Notre Dame has taken any spark out of this crowd because this place is quiet. On second down and eight, the reverse. DeAndre Goodwin, and Goodwin close to a first down. We go back to Wendy in the studio. Mark Sports Center right now in Breeders' Cup. Curlin, the heavy favorite, comes up short. He fails to become just the second horse to repeat as the Breeders' Cup Classic champion. And in Philly, they've got some bad weather. So the Rays and Phillies in a rain delay. This series, of course, tied up at one game apiece. Sports Center after Alabama, Tennessee on ESPN. All right, Wendy, and they're going to bring the sticks in and measure. Spotting the ball at about the 22 yard line. And about that much short. You take a look at Tyrone Willingham. You know, you just sense this crowd right now, and they sense whatever could go wrong will go wrong. And it's that kind of atmosphere right here with this young football team and with this crowd 
just an overriding lack of confidence and it really permeates I think the entire yeah. football team. We asked him yesterday how he keeps things positive. He said the best thing that he can do is come to work at the normal time that he usually does and show his resolve. And as players trying to take that cue from him put out the effort on the field third and short and Fouch looks like he's going to have just enough for the first down across that line Kerry Neal the first one there to meet him and based on the spot he's going to have enough for the first down okay, I think he does and you know you talk about Tyrone Willingham I mean you have to show mental toughness as a coach I mean first of all you can't think about next week or next year or what might happen you can't allow yourself to be a distraction but there's an old saying who motivates the motivator mm. that's the problem and at some point he is human Fouch back to pass incomplete a little bit of contact yeah back to Willingham he said that the best thing that I can do is just to stay consistent in my approach and he's remained the very you know kind of stoic straightforward coach he's always been well yeah and there's nothing to say I mean common sense tells you I mean you don't have to experience firsthand what Tyrone Willingham is going through to know what he's going through it's just common sense I mean he is fighting right now on second down in 10 once again Terrence Daly Daly stopped up once again by Maurice Crum yeah, he comes in Tyrone Willingham does of course four years ago on the heels of a one in ten season after Keith Gilbertson and some recruiting prospects that they would have liked to have gotten at the time got away and since that time things really not working out that well for him. Well he said his first year he tried to recruit a lot of junior college guys and that route didn't work. So basically they kind of wasted that first recruiting class. And I mean they are thin right now. This is one of the youngest football teams in the country. On third down and seven, Fouch given plenty of time. Gonna take off himself. Fouch steps out of bounds right at the marker, and it looks like he has enough for the first down. At the 33, he picked up seven. And Washington with their second first down of the ball game. Well, that crowd looks like they're still waiting to be, to be impressed. But Ronnie Fouch, I mean, you can see he can run. You know, he's only a uh, redshirt freshman, not real highly recruited. You know, his grandfather played at USC. His dad was a backup quarterback at Arizona State for Mark Malone. I mean, in reality, he's supposed to be a backup quarterback himself right now. On first and 10, incomplete over the middle, intended for Michael Gottlieb. Had it in his hands. Well, this week on Monday Night Football in an AFC South showdown, Peyton Manning and Reggie Wayne lead the 3-3 three and three Colts against the only remaining undefeated team, the Tennessee Titans, led by Kerry Collins. Boy, what a story. Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Peyton Manning, just eight touchdowns versus seven interceptions. Very uncharacteristic for him as the Colts just 3-3 three and three so far this year against that Tennessee defense, which is very tough. Second down and 10 coming up for foul. The handoff to Terrence Daly. And Daly stopped up. No gain on the play. It's Notre Dame defense, you know, well documented. John Tanuta from Georgia Tech came in, actually, as the associate head coach for defense a Corwin Brown is the defensive coordinator and calls the defenses you really haven't seen the impact big picture wise of John Tenuta you know they only have seven sacks all season third down and ten coming up here comes that blitz and this time on Q Boxing they get the sack back at the 21 yard line Harrison Smith number 22 the first one to get there Tenuta dialed it up <laughs> He's licking his chops right now. He can see the, the protection problems that Washington has early in this game. But, you know, Notre Dame came in 100th in the country in sacks with only seven and 113 in tackles for losses. But the Huskies are curing yeah. those statistics right now. Fourth and 22, Ballman to punt. This one better than his first one, but not by much. Fielded on Washington's side of midfield. And Golden Tate going to be whistled and stopped up on the Husky side of midfield 
Well these two teams last met back in 2005 a Notre Dame win it was the first time these two teams went head to head with opposing head coaches uh, Weiss and Willingham in their respective present jobs and it was Notre Dame from start to finish. Smarja with the touchdown catch 36 to 17 the final verdict in that one in fact the Irish have won six straight they're six and all time against Notre Dame kind of ironic, me against Washington kind of ironic that Notre Dame would come out here back to back games against Washington no, you don't see that very often and it's batted down at the line of scrimmage by number six Bonzel McDowell who was victimized earlier on that pass interference call. It's going to be second down and ten. Let's see Jimmy Clausen. You know, last year came in, obviously is the highly rated quarterback from California. A lot of people forget last year, prior to his freshman year, had the elbow surgery in the summer. Was never really full speed till mm -hmm. September. Started about nine games last year, but really was never healthy. I mean, you see the arm strength now as advertised. That was in and out of the starting lineup. This is going to be number 33, Robert Hughes, on the run over the right side. Brought down at the 38 yard line and getting back to Jimmy Clausen. Last season had seven touchdown passes versus six interceptions, but as you mentioned, Bob came in with a lot of hype. Now, any guy that announces his decision to attend Notre Dame at the College Football Hall of Fame, he arrived in a stretch Hummer limousine, white fur coat on, rings on his fingers, said he wanted to win three national titles. Wasn't lacking for confidence. That's my kind of quarterback. I knew you were headed. I can picture a young Mark Jones in that same scenario, pulling up in that same exact limo. Now. <laughs> It'd have to be a big one. Stopped up short of the line of scrimmage is Robert Hughes. Nice surge up front by the Huskies, led by Mason Foster. On fourth down and short now for Notre Dame. Well, and there's no question that Charlie Weiss will go for it. One of the few negative plays all season that Washington has created Mason Foster the linebacker running through right there. Well, Notre Dame has some place kicking issues mind you this would have been a very long field goal. Looks like they're going to leave their offense on the field but the Irish call a timeout. The first of the half and we're going to take one right along with them. Back with more after this. First of the half. And welcome back, everyone, to Husky Stadium. Tyrone Willingham decided to call a timeout on fourth down and short coming up. Willingham. They have had a favorable schedule. You know, won four games at home, uh, lost two games on the road. But I mean, when you look at the future of this program, I mean, it is bright. Right. You look at these young, skilled players that they've recruited to South Bend. I mean, all those skilled position players on offense are young and they are dynamic. I think their skill players match up with any skill players in college football right now. I really do. Floyd and Tate. Fourth down and short. On the lead play, it's number 34, James Aldridge. Enough for the first down. Stopped up by Trenton Tuya Sopopo. Mark, you look at this Washington team. The thing that is overriding when you watch the tape, they have no punch or no suddenness. And, and I think that's the cumulative effect of a lot of things. First, they're young. And they have guys thinking too much. Second, I think mentally they're beat down. I mean, when all you hear every week is your coach's jobs on the line, losing, it's a cumulative effect. But there is no punch on this football team. First down and 10 for Notre Dame. Crossing on the play fake. Downfield for Tate. Incomplete, broken up in the end zone nicely by Mosley. He competed on that play. Mark, he did compete. And he got that left arm in there, Matt Mosley, and stayed with it because, again, I mentioned this earlier, that's a great play. But when you see the football go up on a deep ball to these Notre Dame receivers, and I've watched enough of them this year, you just expect them to make the catch. And that was a great effort by Matt Mosley. Second down and 10 coming up. Foster 
across and into some heat. Gets away and makes an incredible escape job of a play down to 33. Robert Hughes making the catch. And Daniel T. Onesim, 66, who is Washington's best defensive lineman. The only defensive lineman starter back from last year. Great effort guy from Hawaii. I've got a lot of respect for this guy, Mark. I mean, he put the tape on. He plays hard now. His late father, Daniel, was a painter, and actually one of his projects back in the day was working right here on Husky Stadium. So he plays with tremendous pride every time they have a home game here. Third down and five for Notre Dame. Hughes picks up the first down, delivering a blow on the play as well. Good block on the edge by Robbie Paris on McDowell. Notre Dame with another first down. Let's take a look at Robbie Harris right there. Gets a good block on number six, Butler, the linebacker. Number nine, excuse me. No, number six, McDowell, the corner. Pickup of nine on the play. First down and ten. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. A first quarter in which Charlie Weiss's Notre Dame Fighting Irish have dominated so far. Knows the ball resting at the 24. See Washington continues to be in that three man front, which it's pretty advantageous for Notre Dame to run the football against them. Here comes Hughes again. Stopped up after a gain of about two. Notre Dame coming off a 29 24 loss. And with Charlie Weiss really eager to get that first road win. 0 oh 2 on the road so far this season. So Notre Dame with, with a lot to prove. Losing at Michigan State. One of the losses. Four seconds to go in the first quarter. We're going to flip it around and come back for the beginning of the second period. Notre Dame with the lead. the Northwest Seattle Washington look at the downtown area and a short trip up Interstate 5 and Lake Washington the U district and the University of Washington here at Husky Stadium I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey Todd Harris down in the field Notre Dame leading to start the second quarter 14 to nothing it's second down Tate in motion Tate on the handoff and Tate sacked back at the 33 Bob, that almost looked like the play that went for a touchdown earlier. Stevens, the linebacker, stayed at home on the back side right there. You can see Notre Dame's added a little bit of the wide reverse package. And Chris Stevens, the senior linebacker, come up with a big play right there. Big negative play for the Washington defense. A loss of 10 makes it third and 19. I'll tell you what, keep your eyes on these outside receivers of Notre Dame. They throw the deep ball mark as good as anybody in the country now. Clawson ready to pull the trigger on third and long. Going up top. Incomplete intended for Michael Floyd. Once again, Mosley there defending on the play, doing a nice job. Fourth and long. Yeah, Matt Mosley, I mean, you knew the football was going to go up the field. Good job of leaning into the wide receiver, looking back to the football, then leaning into the receiver. Well, the offense is still on the field for Notre Dame on fourth and long. Brandon Walker, the place kicker, has had a struggle of a season. He's just two of eight on the year. There he is. He remains on the sideline. Boy, this is really an indictment of your place kicker when you're going for it on fourth and 19 at this part of the field. Yeah, don't forget about those dynamic skill players out there at wide receiver. Into traffic and picked up. Should have let that hit the ground. And now it's going to be first down at about the two-yard line. And that's easy to sit up here and say, why didn't you let the ball hit the ground? Because we would have had the football out at the 33-yard line. But give Washington credit 
for making a play on the football. The big tight end, Kyle Rudolph, down the middle of the field. The football punched out of there by Tripper Johnson, number 34, and then the interception by number eight, Nate Williams. The Huskies got a little bark left. In zone, their first possession of the second quarter. Red zone alert, Alabama with the ball on Tennessee's seven-yard line in that game. Give us to the fullback on first down. Paul Homer picks up a couple yards. Let's go back to Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you. We take you out to Knoxville, Alabama, visiting the Vols. PJ Fitzgerald punting from his own end zone, partially blocked. A Ontario Hardesty gives the Vols solid field position, but they would go on to miss a field goal. Alabama up by three. Ohio State and Penn State over on ABC. We've got a defensive struggle, no score, and we are now in the second quarter. All right, Wendy on second down and eight. The Huskies run it into a crowd and emerge pack daily. Gains four yards. Bob, back to that interception. Well, Tough decision to make, yeah, right? You know, all those armchair quarterbacks around the country that are Washington fans will say, why on fourth down would you ever intercept this ball? But put yourself right now in the position of Nate Williams. I mean, that's just instincts. That wasn't like the ball was floating up in the air, and I had a long time to think out the scenario of, well, I should let this drop because we're going to gain valuable field position. So just a making a play. Tough to turn it off that quickly. Ronnie Fouch looking at third down and four. Curse in motion. Oh. Incomplete and dropped. Intended for Aguilar. It would have been a first down. And a chorus of booze now raining down. Huskies. That's their third drop of the game already. Well, Aguilar, just a freshman. Again, the zone blitz. There's some holes in that zone. Obviously, he's wide open. And Mark, that is a case of turning, looking downfield before you catch the football. But Aguilar, really a guy that's coming on Colorado High School Player of the Year a couple years ago in the state of Colorado. As a result, fourth down. Wallman coming from his own end zone. A high punt, but not deep at the 40-yard line. Tate. And Tate with a nice return out to the 30 of Washington. But there's a flag down on the play after the 33-yard punt. 10 on the return. Here's the call. Get a false start on Washington. Legal formation on the offense. Only six players on the line of scrimmage. The five-yard penalty will be added on to the end of the kick. First down for Notre Dame. Well, sets them up in great field position. First down and 10, Notre Dame at the 25. And Jimmy Clausen going to try and atone for that interception he threw just a few moments ago. Saved by the set here on placid looking Puget Sound. 14 0 Notre Dame with the lead back here at Husky Stadium. First down and 10 for the Fighting Irish. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. Todd Harris down to the field. Notre Dame working on a short field after the penalty on that punt. Crossing out of the shotgun. a strong runner after the catch gets another Notre Dame first down picking up 12. There is no question about Jimmy Clausen's arm strength. I mean he let that thing rip right there. You're going to watch Michael Floyd with that big body just gets inside on the slant route. Great hands as well. First down and 10 from the 13. and hands it off to Armando Allen who picks up four. Let's go to Wendy. Mark, how about a check on Alabama and Tennessee? The Crimson Tide haven't won back-to-back -back games against Tennessee since 91-92. They are on their way. Glenn Coffey, a three-yard run. Makes it 13-3. The World Series still in a rain delay. Keep in mind, this series tied up at one game apiece. All right, Wendy, and uh, 
Clawson at quarterback. Remember, his brothers, Rick and Casey, both attended Tennessee. Played ball there, second down and seven. Incomplete. Intended for Armando Allen out of the backfield. And uh, Clawson saying that during the bye week last week, he went down to Tennessee to visit uh, his sister, a couple of his teammates. Half of the Vols game before coming back. Well, I've known the family for a long time. Casey Clausen was in our quarterback camp, summer camp, uh, back at Notre Dame. And, you know, Jimmy has taken his share of hits now. He talked about the limo ride. Uh, he's taken a lot of heat, which comes with the territory of playing quarterback at Notre Dame. But I have really impressed with his development. Swinging it pretty good, especially early on third down and seven now into the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Kyle Rudolph, the freshman tight end, defended by Tripper Johnson, making it fourth and seven. You know Charlie's thinking right now, That's I pretty. would really like to go for this because I pretty much have my way <laughs> with the Washington defense. Well, this time they send in Brandon Walker, who, as I mentioned earlier, is just two of eight on the season. Made a 42-yarder a couple of weeks ago against North Carolina, which is his long of the season. This one coming from 28 yards out. And he gets it inside that left upright. The Irish increasing its lead to 17 to nothing over the Huskies. We'll be back right after this. the lights at Husky Stadium on the banks of Lake Washington. I want to send a shout out to our friends on the, the big dog <laughs> boat out there, Bob. They uh, helped us out yeah. with our show open. You're envisioning bringing Sarah up here for a little summer vacation. Is yeah. You're planting the seeds to come back up here. I noticed how you were working the owner. I'm, of pretty, that. I'm pretty good on the water. Oh, I know. Bit. Me and a little salmon. <laughs> <laughs> 17 to nothing. This is Polk on the kickoff return. Looking for a big play, but can't get it here. Ten-yard kickoff return, and get your weekly dose of NFL news and analysis on ESPN Sunday. First at 11, Chris Berman of the crew on NFL Countdown, presented by IBM, featuring Trent Edwards, who has the Bills off to a 5-1 and one start. Then at 7, Chris Berman and John Saunders deliver today's highlights on SportsCenter. Sunday NFL Countdown, presented by IBM and SportsCenter on ESPN Sunday. Red zone alert with Tennessee now countering against Bama on the tied 14-yard line. Interesting scenario with Alabama still perfect on the season so far. This is Daly. Got a couple of yards on the left side. Brian Smith making the stop on the play. I'll tell you one thing, Mark. This is a beautiful place out here. You know, yesterday... When you went back to the hotel to take that little nap, <laughs> I took a walk and around workout. this campus. And workout. This is a beautiful, beautiful campus. You know, it reminds me a lot of Notre Dame. I mean, it's obviously a lot bigger than Notre Dame's campus, but the buildings, the style of buildings, uh, the, the, the vegetation around here, it, it's a beautiful place now. Very uh, rustic surroundings, really nestled in the middle of a metropolitan area. Just got to get their football team some points right now. Down 17 to nothing. Fouch up field into traffic and almost intercepted. Dangerously into coverage. It was intended for Jermaine Curse, but David Bruton there along with Sergio Brown to make the play. And when you lose a player like Jake Locker, who is the complete face of this Washington program, he's the quarterback in a spread offense. He's a thousand yard rusher, first of all. The guy's a thousand yard rusher. He's still their leading rusher, and he's been out three weeks. When you lose a guy like that, obviously physically, but also mentally, it deflates your entire offense. Third down and eight. Couch just one of seven incomplete over the middle. And it's fourth down. Jake Locker injured in this game against Stanford, broke his thumb, and really unceremoniously doing it on a block of all things, Bob. That is a shame. On a block. That is a quarterback a blocking. <laughs> I mean, that's the I mean, real that is, irony of That it. is part of the contract. Yeah. I mean, you're acting you know, like, like he shouldn't be blocking, but that is a great young man right there and just so competitive. Fourth down, and that's their third, pardon me, fourth three and out for the Huskies. An end-over-end punt by Ballman. 
Tate at the 38. Golden Tate. Ran about 20 yards, got about three on the return after the 38-yard punt. For more on Locker, let's go down to Todd. Yeah, Mark and Coach, I had a chance to talk with Jake Locker before the game started. He was actually talking with Notre Dame's players and just kind of chumming around with him. And I gave him to him saying, what's the situation on your thumb? He said, you know, I'm a good three weeks out. Now, a lot of people in this area were saying, hey, Jake Locker could come back. We could get a couple wins. He said he's still three weeks out. And at that three-week point, they will take out the hardware they put in to that thumb. So he's a long way away. I said, the chance of you coming back is what? And he just looked at me and shook his head. So for the Huskies fans, not good news for Jake Locker's return. Yeah, there have been some whispers, and Locker himself talked has said that uh, he wouldn't mind getting back on the field and even if he can't play quarterback special teams anything just to help the crew out this is Armando Allen breaking a couple of tackles picking up six on the play and he was last year's conference player of the year in the Pac-10 great two sports star in high school his father really playing a prominent role in his athletic development and you really you look at this Washington football team this year from a coach's perspective, no shot. I mean, you open up with Oregon, BYU, and Oklahoma. Then in schedule. your fourth game of the year against Stanford, your quarterback goes down. So, you know, early scheduling, such a key part of college football. And let's be honest, I mean, Washington way over schedules early in the season. Second down and four. Allen again. Allen stopped up after a gain of about two and uh, you look at potential turning points when your psyche is so fragile Bob a young team would have that type of psyche that game against BYU really seemed to take steam out of their collective sale no question I mean Washington goes in to tie the game a Jake Locker scores the touchdown all they need is the extra point but they get called for a celebration penalty that was uh, real controversial real controversy and then they Ultimately had the extra point blocked. Third down and two for Notre Dame. First down and then some by Wendy Nix. You can always get great salmon out here. I'll try and get you some. Back to you. I tell you what, I love it out there, Mark Jones. I've got to hold you to that. This update, speaking of food, brought to you by Taco Bell. Missouri coming off two tough losses, trying to prove a point. Chase Daniel, the 30-yard strike to Jeremy Macklin. He's thrown five touchdown passes, two to Macklin, 48 Mizzou over Colorado. Boy, Missouri bouncing back. They are. You know, we had Chase Daniel early in the year. We did the Oklahoma State game. You know, Jimmy Clausen reminds me of Chase Daniel, only with a stronger arm. Interesting comparison. This is Aldridge. Another first down over the left side of that offensive line, running over Mike Turkovich and Eric Olson. Tuya Sosopo making the stop finally, but 15 yards downfield. We've seen Allen, Hughes, and Aldridge run the ball pretty well for Notre Dame. And successfully switching up their attack a little bit and a little bit more balanced Bob in this game yeah I mean pick and choose I mean you can run it and you can throw it you see Notre Dame back to the eye formation right now maybe a good play action pass situation to launch that ball down the field Floyd in motion they run it Aldridge got about three maybe four on the play James Aldridge the six foot 225 pound junior once again you know this Washington defense last year 103rd in the country Tyrone Willingham really forced the fire Kent Bear last year's defensive coordinator you know he'd been with Kent Bear 13 years went back to Stanford and Notre Dame very very tough to do he had to do it brought in Ed Donatel an 18 year NFL veteran Results haven't been a whole lot different. Yeah, this is Golden Tate. Tate picks up the Notre Dame first down. Close to the 20-yard line, brought down at about the 21. Golden Tate and Michael Floyd, two lethal threats. And there's Ed Donatell. Spent time with the Green Bay Packers, Atlanta Falcons. Obviously a good football coach, but Mark, they are about last in every category there is on defense. Six starters back. Bottom line. No explosive playmakers on defense. They lost uh, one of the more promising freshmen before the game, Kelametti. This is Aldridge again. Hit hard right at the 20 yard line and a flag down on the play as well. Holding on the offense, number 59. 
10 yard penalty. First down. A penalty against Chris Stewart. So they're going to bring it back. You look at Jimmy Clausen as we take a look at Charlie Weiss. The reason I think Jimmy Clausen is primed, I think, to potentially run at the Heisman yes. over the next couple of years. Wow. I really think he will. I'm going to pull the Ron Powell. I was just going to bring that name up, man. <laughs> I'm going to pull the Bino <laughs> Cook, right? Go ahead, Bino. But Cook. the reason is, first of all, he has Charlie Weiss, who Charlie Weiss has developed Tom Brady, uh, Brady Quinn. He has a great surrounding cast around him. I think the way they're throwing the football, I think this guy's going to be in the thick of some things over the next several years from some big time awards. Ready with a couple of touchdown passes. That one incomplete, intended for Michael Floyd. And uh, his numbers comparing pretty favorably with Brady Quinn's as a senior. Came into the game with 14 touchdown passes, has since added one in this contest. Well, so much of it is who you have around you. I mean, think of Brady Quinn. I mean, Jeff Samarja, Stovall, they made some unbelievable catches. But I see the same thing coming together for Jimmy Clausen with Golden Tate and Michael Floyd. His brothers, Rick and Casey, former football players of Tennessee, put a screen pass complete. Aldridge stopped up. Gained about one on the play in a red zone alert at the top of your screen. Penn State threatening against Ohio State. Let's get back to Clawson. Rick and Casey, former players of Tennessee. How many of the Clawson brothers have you recruited? Have recruited any? Yeah, Casey. We them? recruited when we were at Notre Dame. As I mentioned, he was in our football camp. And I remember both brothers coming by. Jimmy Clawson was just a little guy right. back then. And I remember everybody saying then, the family, uh -huh. he will be better. And the brother said that he will be better than all of us when it comes time. He was the number one rated player in the country out of Oaks Christian High School in Southern California, Jimmy. Third and 19. Play fake. Into the end zone. Incomplete. <laughs> Floyd couldn't quite squeeze it. And Matt Mosley once again stride for stride into Boy, Klaus a little hot. Thought he should have had it there. Well, I'll tell you something. I have a lot of respect for Matt Mosley because everyone in this stadium knew where the ball was going. This looks like an exact replay of the play we had earlier. The ball a little bit underthrown, which a lot of times is really difficult on a corner. And, uh, Brandon Walker going to come in and try a field goal. This one, they're going to spot it at the 38. It'll be a 48-yarder. That, that would tie his career long. Kind of surprising that Charlie Weiss would let him kick it from well, this distance. What, what a great time, though, to gain some confidence in a 17 yeah. nothing game, though. Hey, back to the Clausens. Uh, good food in the living room? Did they hook you up with a good meal? <laughs> huh? well, I, I know you're the lord of the living room, man. You work those couches and Your those priorities and desks. scare me sometimes. We're down coming up for Charlie Weiss, the head coach of Notre Dame in his fourth season, coaching at his alma mater. Looking for Notre Dame's, uh, they haven't won a national title since the 89 season. And they are going to go for it. I kind of like this. You know, a lot of big, tall playmaker, playmakers. Remember last time he went to Kyle Rudolph, the big tight end, number nine. You have Michael Floyd and Golden Tate on the outside. So launch it up. One of two today on fourth down. Clawson given time. Has a man incomplete at the 10. Off the hands of Robbie Paris. And the Huskies will take over on downs. Well, he had him open. Yeah. It's always easy to have hindsight, Bob, but going back to the place kicker, Brandon Walker, at some point during the season, you're going to need him to be confident in making it. Yeah, I think that's a legitimate point. I mean, I guess there's two ways to look at it. If it's a little bit out of his range, he's on a little bit of a roll right now. He already made one, so don't make him try one stretching his range. <laughs> but the other hand, if he could have made it, sure, great confidence builder. First down and 10. Hand off to David Freeman. Check that. That's, yeah, Freeman on the carry. And uh, hey, remember this week on Monday Night Football, AFC South battle. 
the Colts led by Peyton Manning and Reggie Wayne taking on the tough defense of the Titans and the offense led by Kerry Collins Monday Night Football on ESPN at 8.30 Eastern Time coverage begins at 7 with Monday Night Countdown delivered by UPS second down and two for the Huskies and it's Freeman again and Freeman going to have enough for the first down Tennessee with its best franchise history getting back to that Monday night game coming up against Indianapolis and you hear the crowd but they thank you first down <laughs> Do you think there's a little sarcasm just a touch in the stadium? Yeah, they they appreciated that first down though Those boats out there on Lake Washington aren't sinking yet Third first down of the game for the Huskies Freeman Another carry brought down after a gain of about two You know David Freeman another freshman running back out of Englewood, California has had some trouble uh, with his ankles actually both ankles they're not really sure what it is but you know Chris Polk a true freshman tailback opened the season actually started the first game of the year a highly recruited freshman he hurt his shoulder early so this is the third true freshman tailback that's played for Washington a group of different ones get starts during the course of the year Second down and long Freeman again chopped down after a gain of another two yards. It'll be third down and about six to go for the Washington Huskies looking for their first win of the season. And the crowd restless right now, obviously, because Tyrone's decided to run the football a little bit. But every one of the guys that touches the football for him are young guys. So there's just not too, too many chances you can take. I mean, you look at those statistics right there, it really speaks for itself. And unfortunately, Warren Moon and Spider Gaines aren't coming through that locker room door anytime soon. The injured player is Juan Garcia, the six-year senior. Yeah, Juan One of Garcia, the leaders out exactly, there, too. Exactly, Mark. He is, he is a tough guy. Came back for his sixth year, then had a foot injury in spring football. They didn't even think he would be able to play this year and has really fought that foot injury all fall. Now, he's one of the guys that quarterback Ronnie Fouch told us in our meetings yesterday that has really gotten in guys kitchen gotten in their grills and gotten them excited about playing this week against Notre Dame third down and six coming up. watch the exchange whenever you have a new center in the game this one clean and incomplete the official might have been the closest one to catching the pass that time Good pressure brought by Brian Smith. I mean, Ronnie Fouch has taken some licks tonight. And they can't afford to lose him, Bob. Well, that's a his big... backup is a former walk -up. Yeah, Great point, Mark. And that's the reason you don't see the quarterback runs that they highlighted so much with Jake Locker in the game because they just cannot afford to get Ronnie Fouch hurt running the football. George West standing on his own 11-yard line for Notre Dame. A high spiral, a short punt. Bounces at the 24, goes out of bounds at the 22. Working, working on that salmon still, Wendy Nicks. Back to you. Mark, thank you. Well, it took most of the first half. This game over on ABC. Pittsburgh. Ohio State may be yeah. running the table and uh, getting into the national championship yeah. game. Yeah, if they get this one, I mean, you look at their schedule down the stretch, I mean, odds are they're going to run the table. Very favorable outlook for Penn State if they get by Ohio State here. That pass complete. Close to the first down, Robbie Paris, who was unable to hang on to the last pass that came his way on fourth down on the last series, catches this one. Gain of 11 yards on the play. They move the chains. Approaching two minutes to go here in the first half. Notre Dame leading 17 to nothing. And this is the second meeting between Notre Dame and Washington and Charlie White and Willingham, respectively. Under heat and out of bounds and back to Wendy in the studio. Well, Mark, coming up at the half, I'll be joined by Jesse Palmer. We'll take you back out to Columbus, Penn State, and Ohio State. A Big Ten showdown with big implications. The Nick Saban in Alabama trying to stay undefeated. They're in a very contest, though, on the road at Tennessee. Plus, never too soon to look ahead to next week's game of the week. Texas Tech and Texas. Jesse will tell you what he thinks coming up at the half.
Now, did you know I recruited Jesse Palmer's brother, Billy, the tight end, who came to Notre Dame and Blair. had a great career, yeah. Clausen fires complete another first down. That was uh, Michael Floyd with the catch. So tell me about the recruitment then of Jesse's brother. Did you know yeah, the young guy out of Orlando, uh, Steve Adazio, my assistant at that time, offensive line coach, who's now at Florida. We went down and spent some time with the family. Great family. Jesse's done well, huh? Yeah, sure has. Most eligible bachelor. <laughs> I've never been on a TV show named after me. <laughs> First and ten. Blossom. Complete over the middle once again to number 82, Robbie Paris. Blossom, a highly touted player coming out of high school, Westlake Village, California, 42 and 0 during his career there. And, uh, one thing you can see, the recruiting for Notre Dame is definitely on an upswing. This is a talented, talented young football team. They can still handpick a lot of recruits from across the country, like Klaus, and that time firing incomplete. Bob, what's it like being able to go into living rooms from California to New York? Well, that's what the job is. I mean, there's no question about that. I mean, if you look at that graphic, uh, Notre Dame, I think Army is number one in the country with players from different states. I think Navy is number three. Uh, Notre Dame is is number two. So it's a national school for several reasons. Number one, because of the academics and not great high school football numbers in the state of Indiana. So you go coast to coast to get the players. Third down and seven for Clawson. And brought down nicely from behind. Great effort on the play by the Huskies. Chris Stevens there to make the stop for Washington with 38 seconds to go. And you have to give this Washington defense credit. I mean, their backs have been against the wall all night. Good effort by Chris Stevens. Donald Butler, the linebacker, number nine. First punt of the game, Bob, coming up for Notre Dame. As we meet the punt. Hawkins back deep, standing at his own 12-yard line. Eric Most, a uh, pitcher on the Notre Dame baseball well, a team. The, a lot of the fans wonder why Tyron Willingham wouldn't call timeout right there. And that's what the boos are for. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. At this point, is the thinking it's just safe to get into the locker room down 17 nothing? I mean, it's I don't know what you're being safe sound. for. Yeah. Them. I mean, there's no reason to be cautious now, right? I mean, it's 17 nothing. It doesn't look like you have a whole lot to lose with two timeouts left. I mean, I would have used one of the outs. A team that's never punted all night. I mean, ball at the 44 yard line. And, uh, back to the Notre Dame, uh, the recruiting, Bob. Uh, it has its inherent advantages. What's football facility that's outstanding? They now can take over. Commitments. They have 16 commitments for next year, so things definitely on the upswing. They're just going to run out the clock here to end the first half. That's Aldrich into Washington's side of midfield as a chorus of boos shower down on the Huskies and their beleaguered head coach, Tyrone Willingham, at 0-6 so far on the season. It has been a struggle once again for the Huskies as we go downstairs to Todd Harris. Coach, you score in your first two possessions. What was the key there? Well, we got off to a fast start. You know, we've had a couple weeks coming off a of bye to get into a little different uh, formation, and, and that, that got us a quick score. And uh, you know, we got. You know, I think that the guys are ready to come out in, in the first quarter. I'm just a little disappointed offensively in the second quarter. We didn't. You know, we didn't get more production done. Assess your defense, holding them to only 38 yeah. yards total. The defense has been giving them trouble. I mean, we got a little fortunate on a couple of drop passes, but I'll tell you what, they're putting a lot of heat on the quarterback, and they're pretty much shut down the run game. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, Charlie Weiss's gate not as spry as it used to be, the result of that knee injury that he suffered a few weeks ago. Notre Dame leading at the half right now. Wendy Nix for the halftime report back in the studio. Welcome everyone back to Seattle. Notre Dame leading Washington 17 to nothing as we get ready for the start of the third quarter of play under the lights here at Husky Stadium. It has been all Notre Dame from the opening kick. They scored twice early 
and haven't looked back since. Washington, meanwhile, trying to assume and amass some sense of offense. Washington coming into this game at 0-6, uh, still in search of its first win of the season, and Notre Dame trying to prove something to itself in getting a road win, regardless of the opponent, their first of the season. As we get started here in the second half, Washington will kick off. Dame with Golden Tate, one of their dangerous kick returners, back deep. Is number 23 already has one touchdown in this game. Scored the game's first one on a reverse. This is fielded by West. West right up the middle. A nice kickoff return out to the 39-yard line. Mark Jones along with Bob Davey. Todd Harris down in the field, and it has been Notre Dame all the way since the opening kick, Bob. How does Washington turn it around with just 38 yards of total offense in the first half? How much time do we have? <laughs> Check the Rolex. I mean, that, that's not a simple answer to that. I mean, 238 yards for Notre Dame in the first half, 38 yards for Washington. I mean, the reality of Jimmy Clausen would have been hot throughout the second quarter. Uh, this score would be much worse. But to the credit of Washington, I think this defense has hung in there and fought. But it's quite simple. If Notre Dame executes here, they're going to take the ball right down the field. A little pitch and catch right here, complete for the first down. As Jimmy Clausen continues to spread it around to a host of different receivers, that was Kamara. And now you see Notre Dame come out in the five-wide empty look like they did against North Carolina. And that's the beauty of the Charlie Weiss offense. I mean, there's just several different gears and they have the ability and the personnel to run really several different offenses. You see them here, five wide empty. It looks like Missouri. Lawson hits him. He gets it off in time, and it's caught despite the flags. Golden Tate on the reception, working against Forrester. Boy, they've really gone against uh, Mosley and Forrester a lot tonight. Pass interference on the defense. Number 23. 15 We're going to see penalty. the penalty on Mespin Forrester late on Golden Tate. Yeah, I mean, he, he holds them a little bit, pass interference. But one thing you know, if you play with one safety in the middle of the field, which means if you're one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, Charlie Weiss is going to throw the football to those outside receivers. He changed the offense in that Michigan State game. And... Uh, Opened it up, and since that time, Clawson has put up three consecutive career highs with respect to passing yards. That time, they picked up 33. First and 10 from the 16-yard line. Clawson going to pull the trigger again. Complete to the 11-yard line. Todd Harris, what did Tyrone Willingham have to say at halftime? Well, guys, as usual, Tyrone Willingham, very upbeat. And Coach Ty told me, he said, you know what, we got to handle their pressure. Bottom line, we've got to just handle their pressure. And he was very encouraged by what they were able to establish on the inside run towards the end of the second quarter. And he said, bottom line, Todd, we got to catch the ball. Yeah, you know, uh, Fouch had a couple of drops in the first half. Interesting how Notre Dame came out early in this football game and ran the ball. Now they see Washington's defensive plan and they go back to their five wide attack. Tate with the catch. His forward progress is going to give him the first down inside the five yard line. That time working again against Methvin Forrester. Tate picking up seven. It'll be first down and goal for Notre Dame. As you look the last three weeks, 476 yards against Purdue, 430 against Stanford, 472 against North Carolina. Now they're back to the two-back set. James Aldridge, the deep back out of the offset out. It's going to be Aldridge on the carry. Touchdown, Irish. In a brief but efficient romp down the field, Notre Dame scores early here in the third quarter to make it 23 to nothing. He's going to get a good block by his fullback right there, Asaf Schwab. Boy, it looked like his knee might have been down before. We're going to call it a touchdown. Now he was already into the end zone. 
The extra point good by Brandon Walker. And in a blink, the Irish score a touchdown here to start off the third quarter. 24 to nothing on the board when we come back. 61 yard drive, which used up just under two minutes on the clock. You know, you look under that uh, toque that he's wearing, and possibly uh, shaved off the locks, the golden long locks that he had on his head after that loss against Michigan State. Going for a new look, a little new mojo. This kickoff return by Polk out to the 24 yard line, where they start first down and 10. You realize who Washington has next on the schedule. Didn't want to bring that up. <laughs> the Trojans USC. of USC, who have a huge game tonight down in Tucson against Arizona. That's going to be an interesting football game. Mike Stoops' team is, is much improved. You're talking like it might be an upset alert. It could be. I mean, that'll be a good football game tonight. Now, with that said, if USC can get past that game, I think that last game there, it's actually at Hawaii for Washington, not right. California. On the offense. 12 players on the field. Five-yard penalty. First down. Not a very auspicious way to begin the third quarter in the second half for well, Tyrone's Williams. You know, last team. week against Oregon State, they had a delay of game penalty on the first play of the, the game. first play of the game, which incited the crowd, obviously, and now the half right here. But David Freeman in the backfield dotting the eye. Todd Terra Harris reported a few moments ago that Coach Williams was pleased with the way that they ran the ball between the tackles to end the first half. That pass complete to DeAndre Goodwin, working against Lambert on the play, picked up a few yards. Second down coming up. Goodwin, one of a couple of bright spots last week in that loss against Oregon State, kind of a couple of deep balls, becoming the team's first 100 yard receiver on the season and if you're just joining us Ronnie Fouch the quarterback only because Jake Locker broke his thumb a few weeks ago on the reverse this is good win. always good when they put the ball in his hands makes it down to the 29 yard line sets up a third down and short for the Huskies red zone alert for Alabama threatening against Tennessee a big SEC game Alabama also undefeated, USC undefeated. Pardon me, USC not undefeated, but uh, they are in a good spot to potentially move up. Number five in the BCS standings. Protecting the quarterback has been a big, big problem for Washington. Third and four. Pass complete and caught at the 37-yard line by Goodwin. And a first down for Washington. Ronnie Fouch was telling us yesterday, you know, his mom was a four-year All-American volleyball player at the University of Redlands. His sister's an All-American. We're actually playing volleyball in high school, so his mom wasn't able to make the game tonight. Comes from about an hour east of L.A. He'll run it here, watching the does to Freeman. You know, you talked about how there's so many young players, Bob, on this team for Washington, and it's going to be ruled down. No fumble on the play, but uh, Fauci, a typical example of what the growth process can be all about. He was telling us yesterday he came into Washington as a 178-pound freshman. He's now up to 220. He made sure to let me know it was 212 and not 205, which he was listed at in the media guide, <laughs> or 203 or on your screen what helped that as of yesterday exactly well what helped him is locker was down in training camp with a hamstring so he did get a lot of in training camp had a lot of opportunities to work with the first offense that's david freeman the tailback down in the field a little shaken up after that last play and he has had uh, ankle problems but you know you talk about washington's offense you know used to be a lot of kids from L.A. came to Washington. Now they have a lot of choices between here and L.A., the emergence of some of those programs. Yeah, the landscape has gotten a lot more competitive recruiting-wise uh, in the Pac-10. Second down and eight. Backside pressure and a sack. 
Fouts got nailed from the weak side by Brian Smith coming on the blitz. And I'll tell you, Brian Smith may be the biggest surprise on this Notre Dame football team. Watch him come from the top. They tried to slide the protection that way, but then Osai loose at the top. But Brian Smith, a young guy that committed to Iowa, Notre Dame didn't offer him. His dad played at Notre Dame, was a fullback under Jerry Fowler. Late take has emerged, I think, is probably one of their best defensive players. This guy has a bright future. Boy, Fouch did well just to hang on to the football on that play. The third sack of the night for Notre Dame. That pass incomplete, symbolic for the Huskies. Curse couldn't hang on. And for more on the landscape in the Pac-10, here's Tom. The coach was talking about Washington's tailback by committee. Now, he said there's been, they've used six different tailbacks, four different starters, one sophomore, two redshirt freshmen, and three true freshmen. And then you couple that with quarterback Ronnie Fouch. He's a redshirt freshman. He's backed up by a walk-on. So thin times on the offensive side for the Huskies. Yeah, underscoring the point. to keep Fouch healthy at least until Locker can get back onto the field. Fair catch called to the 40-yard line. After the 31-yard punt, Tate got the fair catch, and we'll be back after this. I feel like you're trapped inside that bubble and can't get out right now. Well, Bolt is a new animated comedy featuring the voices of John Travolta and Miley Cyrus that will be in theaters November 21st. Bolt about a super dog named Bolt, star of a TV hit show, thinks he really has superpowers, accidentally gets shipped from Hollywood to New York and tries to make his way back. First down and 10 for Notre Dame at the 40-yard line. Clawson. The 36. The defense getting a little amped up. Everett Thompson with the sack on the play. Another one of those young freshmen up front. You know, Washington came into this game with only three sacks all season. They were last in the country in sacks. But Everett Thompson, a true freshman, 6'6", 255 from Renton, Washington. Last year's recruiting class here at Washington, there are some players in this freshman class. Guys yeah, getting some valuable experience. Second and 14 after the loss. Clawson escapes from Thompson this time. There's a flag down the field, and Clawson harmlessly throws it out of bounds. Yeah, we're going to get a hold on Notre Dame's left guard. Holding Golly. on the offense. Number 78, 10-yard penalty, second down. That's against Trevor Robinson. Yeah, Trevor Robinson, who is in for Eric Olson. Watch the left guard right here. That's a takedown. But, you know, you talk about recruiting. Charlie Weiss on the open date this past weekend flew to Hawaii to recruit a young man, a linebacker. You remember back when we had USC? Mm -hmm. The Friday after the Oregon State loss, Pete Carroll told us he flew to see the same linebacker over in Hawaii play, which tells you what recruiting is. But, isn't it unbelievable? You can't even talk. You can't even talk to the players, but you have coaches from Notre Dame and USC flying all the way to Hawaii just to show them how bad they want it. Got to be seen. That's what it is, isn't it? You got a little mileage on you for that, right? <laughs> Back after this. The cash and you could win a million dollars. Go to ES. Second and 24. Clawson completes it. That's Kamara. Pushed out of bounds as we go back to Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you. We take a look at Alabama, Tennessee. Now watch closely. Mark Ingram, uh-oh, doesn't hold on the ball. It's a fumble, right? So Eric Berry picks it up, and away he will go. That is bad news, as it looks like Tennessee has scored. However, that's what they make the review for, and it's no go. He's ruled down, no fumble. Alabama will score a 14-point swing, 22-3 Crimson Tide. Ooh. Thank you. Close one. Well, it's good to have that. Bringing that one right here. It's 24 to nothing. Notre Dame with the lead on third down and 14. Clawson brought down at the 36 by Foster. Oh, had a good night 
for this Washington defense. And again, I give them a lot of credit for hanging in there and fighting. They've disrupted more plays tonight probably than we've seen all year. Yeah. I mean, they forced some negative. Is this Notre Dame's first punt of the night, I believe? Sure is. Devin Aguilar back at his own 25-yard line. Ready to get this punt from Eric Moss, a pitcher on the Notre Dame baseball team. Golden Tate, the wide receiver. A couple of baseball players, they fake it. A short snap, and Notre Dame is on the move. First down, Charlie Wise, trick play, and Harrison Smith. Five-yard pickup by Smith. Mark, he got an excellent block by Scott Smith, number five. And right there. Watch the punter. Punters love the thing right here. <laughs> it's the most action he's gotten tonight. <laughs> wow. Gives him a first and ten. Aldridge breaks a couple of tackles, still on his feet. And finally, the ten. And it'll be first and goal after that 18-yard run. Well, the beauty of them, they have different tailbacks. You know, you see Armando Allen in there when they're in their spread game. And now you see James Aldridge. Also, Robert Hughes comes in when they go to their power game. So, another example of really two or three different offenses within the framework of this Notre Dame package. The game in search of its first road win of the season. Austin hands it off to Aldridge. And stopped up after a gain of about one by Donald Butler. Well, this week on Monday Night Football and AFC South Showdown, Peyton Manning, Reggie Wayne, and the 3-3 three and three Colts against the only remaining undefeated team, the Tennessee Titans, led by Kerry Collins. Monday Night Football and ESPN, 8.30 Eastern time. Coverage beginning at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown, but presented and delivered by UPS. Second and goal for the Irish. Aldridge the deep back. Carey patiently waiting to follow his blocks and his forward progress going to take him just where Nate Williams makes the stop. Picked up four on the play. It'll be third down for Notre Dame. Got a steady dive. Uh, Dridge late here for Notre Dame. Guys not playing. And offensive lineman out with injury. And then David Grimes, their wide receiver with back spasms. So Notre Dame down a couple guys. And tonight, third and goal. And it's sacked back at the 26 yard line by Donald Butler. Boy, and that really changes a field goal range now for Brandon Walker. Yeah, Donald Butler beat Asaf Swap, the fullback, who was trying to block him. Really, Jimmy Clausen just nowhere to throw that football. I mean, really good coverage, but another play. Should he have should have thrown that football? This field goal made here tonight. This one is going to come from 42 yards out. Well, Walker is a <laughs> reborn, reinvigorated, and accurate. Splits the uprights to make it 27 to nothing. at some of the big picture, big ticket items. And Notre Dame, not in the national scope, but uh, boy, USC, Ohio State early. And LSU. Penn State game tonight. I think I saw Ohio State went up six to in the Nittany Lions. But how about Florida today? Florida just pounding Kentucky. Georgia, Florida, a huge football game. But Texas, Texas Tech. 
next weekend in Lubbock, Texas, Mark. That is a great football game. I mean, having coached at Texas a nine years, trust me, when Texas or Texas A&M comes to Lubbock, it's kind of like there's a little bit of a chip on their shoulder with those people when it comes to A&M or the Longhorns. Oh, yeah. That will be a matchup next week. And I did one of those games. I, I remember what you guys. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you now. <laughs> all that flattering, but yeah, they do have a lot of when it comes to, you know, the guys from 12. Football across the country has gone crazy offensively, but the Big 12 is ridiculous. I mean, Oklahoma and Kansas State today, I think Oklahoma had 50 at halftime. Kansas State had 28 or something. You look at Missouri tonight, what they did to Colorado, Texas, Texas Tech. I mean, they score points yeah. like it's. Yeah. And Leach there knows how to drop some offensive plays. Of course, this one completes a good one. And coaching always a, a crazy journey, whether you're Tyrone Willingham or whether you're Charlie Weiss or whether you're Bob Davey. Look at that. Wow. Bob Davey back in the A&M days. That's huh? Next to R.C. Slocum there. You, the, you and the wrecking crew, right? Well, I know Marcus where we're Buckley going with in. this. That's probably <laughs> Notre Dame's last bowl win in 94. It was actually the 94 Cotton Bowl in Dallas when I was on the staff. I'm still not left speechless there. Daily on the carry. What the hell? <laughs> 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 yeah, let's go back to that cotton bowl. Kevin McDougal, I remember this little trap option right here early in the first quarter for the first touchdown against us. We come back with the touchdown. Greg Hill, a young man from Dallas. This was a good football game right here. Was that uh, Greg Hill in offense you guys had in the backfield? Exactly, exactly. But uh, Notre Dame beat us 24-21 the year before. They beat us as well. Two straight cotton bowls. Dropped on him. This one dropped by Devin Aguilar. That's the fifth drop of the night. You know, you go back to '94 when, when Bob was on the sidelines there, and uh, you know, the last time Notre Dame won a bowl game, the gas price was just a buck seven a gallon. Schindler's List was the best picture winner. World Series was canceled due to the work stoppage, and uh, Bill Clinton was serving his first term in the White House. The chicken fried steak down today, then. <laughs> Up and down. That made quite an impression on you in College Station, didn't it? When you came in for that chicken fried steak. All sides, only defense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Eighth punt of the night coming up for Washington. Charlie Weiss hot about something. Well, the fans want Tyrone not to go for it here on fourth down. To the way. Fair catch called at the 40-yard line. 32-yard punt, nothing on the return. Tyrone willing fourth year here, Bob. 0-6 coming into tonight. With the internet reports, with the print reports, with electronic media reports, all beleaguered on Tyrone Willingham. What's he going through right now? Well, you know, I think he said it best, Jeff. I mean, it's been brutal. So, you know, you don't have to experience that personally for people out there. I mean, common sense tells you there's really nothing you can say about it. This guy's been the head coach at Stanford. is a successful career whatever happens from this point forward and Tyrone Willingham has touched a, a bunch of lives and one thing about him he's not going to flinch I mean he stands up and takes it like a man I have a lot of respect for him as a person a lot of players still glowingly speak of him even the ones on now we're to uh, getting together with saying hello and it's interesting that at Notre Dame he had a winning record when he was dismissed not to say that it is really a done deal, or we're not saying it's a done deal yet here at Washington. Certainly a lot of speculation in that direction as uh, Allen gets him first down. But 
It was a bit of a surprise when he was let go at Notre Dame as opposed to what he's looking at right now in terms of inevitability and his journey has taken him from Stanford to to Notre Dame and had that great first year and they won games went undefeated for the first one oh, and then exactly. to Seattle Washington here Huskies exactly and it's well got let go after that Notre Dame. unheard of at that time had five years at Notre Dame and uh, you know but certainly the landscape of all of college football has changed I mean you have coaches getting let go in the middle of the seat in college football. on the run let's go back to Wendy in the studio Mark a look at what's going on around our family of networks don't forget ABC in the fourth quarter Penn State trailing by three Ohio State six three on top and over on ESPN Alabama rolling over the volunteers from Texas 22 to three Mark all right, Wendy, six, that Ohio State Penn State game. A lot closer than some people thought it might be. I guess uh, Penn State's offense not an easy analog well, tonight. You talk about a young quarterback in Terrell Pryor from Pennsylvania playing for Ohio State and Daryl Clark from Ohio playing for Penn State. Armando, a nice run and another first down for the sophomore from Miami Lakes, Florida, the leading rusher coming into the. 298 pound, uh, yards season. We have an injured Husky player down in the field. That's Tripper Johnson, the 26 year old former professional baseball player. Tyrone Willingham has been a rock, though, through all the adversity, projecting a very consistent image throughout. And here's what he had to say about facing it. You've got a unique mixture of uh, youth and uh, inexperience coming together. And sometimes when that happens, if you don't get the right spark at the right time, it makes it very difficult to get into that role, that uh, that form, that mid-season form that everyone so much talks about and enjoys when your team is just really off big play after big play and having successful and finding that way to handle adversity. I wrote Willingham, uh, Stanford to a 44-36 and one record and uh, really had things going at Stanford when, when he left. That's what he did. But, you know, we talked to him about that yesterday. You know, bottom line, hindsight, would you do it all again? Probably not if you knew how it was going to work out. But he did say what a great experience he had. That made him all. That's a good watch. Now and again, remember, he was 7-0, 8-0 at one point his first season. But, uh, and he said that maybe one of the highlights that he had while he was there was that win that they had at Florida State. It was the first time that they had won there in a long time, the first time that anything perhaps at their first road win of the season. Montana, one of the best of all time. Joe Cool, the son of walk on at Notre Dame. Mondo Allen trying it into the boundary and right out of bounds, right at the line of scrimmage. Joe's son is a walk on quarterback at Notre Dame. You see him right there, Nate Montana. It's a pretty famous name to be walking around that Notre Dame campus. That's a, that's a tough gig to follow. Name. That's a tough gig to follow. <laughs> exactly. On the defense, number six, 15 yard Wow. As if it couldn't get worse for these Huskies. Well, it just did. Get a Von personal Zell. foul right here. That's against Vonzel McDowell. We're going to march this one off 15 yards. Great way to start the fourth quarter. Again, the game started out where Washington had to have some kind of success, and almost immediately, the first series, Michael Floyd on the long touchdown on the wide receiver screen. Aldridge on the toss into the boundary. All 
Aldridge down to the 15 yard line. As we go to Wendy Nixon, the Sports Center right now update. It is indeed, Mark Jones. How about Texas? The number one Longhorns, Colt McCoy, to Quan Cosby. It's close, but they stand and advance 28 24. Number one, Texas moves on to Texas Tech. And game three of the World Series underway. Phillies on top one, nothing. Chase Utley, grounder, scores Jimmy Rollins. This one rain delayed, but they're down top of the second. Boy, uh, rain in Philly, but surprisingly no rain out here in Seattle. Yeah, That's first. been beautiful <laughs> the last couple of days. Second seven. Aldridge again chopped down right at the line of scrimmage by Matt Mos Mosley. It's interesting how different coaches do things different ways. You know, most teams, the whole time I was at Notre Dame, eight years as an assistant and as the head coach, when we came to the West Coast, normally came in Thursday night because it was such a long trip. Charlie really following the NFL way of doing things came in yesterday just like a normal trip. Got to the hotel about 5 o'clock. Charlie went out and recruited last night. So most teams, we always came a day early. Aldridge again on the run, gets a first down and then some. Down at the three-yard line, the advantage of coming in on the Friday being what? Well, I think you just keep your normal routine. You know, you don't make it bigger than it is. Uh, you keep players right on course with the way they are normally accustomed to doing things. Just different ways of doing it. Put it this way, it's worked well because other than USC, Charlie has had his way with Pac-10 teams. I mean, they've had a tremendous record. Yeah. I don't think they've lost to any other Pac-10 team other than USC. Looking at first and goal here. They've run it all nine times on this nine-play drive. Aldridge, the deep back out of the eye. Schwab leading the way. Aldridge powers into the end zone to score. of resignation almost etched across the countenance of Tyrone Willingham the head coach of Washington as the score now 33 to nothing as David Rucker a walk on attempting the extra point he was signed to the team he joined the team just this week he was discovered in the intramural yeah, on campus lived in Siegfried Hall First experience, not a good one. Rudy lives. Sins of the Underworld. 98 Central on History. Huh, these aren't mine. This is Bob at CDW. Leave a message. Hey, Bob, it's Greg. Competition's starting to get a little too close. So... Talk. Let's discuss network security. Call me. Hope you're well. Hey, Greg. I'm here with your network and security specialist. Greg, there are security updates for all your offices and some new features you'll like. Perfect. Thanks, you guys. With experienced technology specialists certified in everything from storage to security, CDW is there. Greg, behind you. <laughs> David Ruffer joined the team this week after being a receiver, I believe it was, on the intramural league team on campus there at Notre Dame. Uh, the thought process behind that, that Coach Wise brought him in to try and push Brandon Walker, who's been struggling all season long. Ruffer uh, missing that extra point a few moments ago, hitting it off the upright. This kick comes down to Quentin Richardson. Richardson brought down at the 27-yard line. Back to Wendy in the studio. Mark, thank you. We go out to Columbus, third and inches for Ohio State. Terrell Pryor, man down, ball loose. It's recovered by Mark Rubin. Penn State recovers on the Ohio State 38. It's now second and goal for the Nittany Lions, trailing by three. Wow, Wendy. How many people envision that low scoring a game, you think, in that box? You know, I, I kind of did, honestly. That low? I mean, Ohio okay. State is a good defensive football team, even though they've struggled with spread. And Fouch struggling with that Notre Dame pass rush. And for more on that, 
longest place kicker for the Irish. David Ruffer, here's Todd. Well, Jones, you're exactly right. Joining the team during the bye week. Now, this is classic. He dressed in football pads for the first time on Wednesday. And his only real pointed out as an intramural playoff for Siegfried Hall at Notre Dame as a wide receiver and kicker. Now, he did help the Ramblers defeat Knott Hall 13 to nothing in the season opener. He kind of TD there. He also serves as their kicker. And Coach White says he's got a good chance. This kid, he's going to push him. But I got to tell you, Walker was the first guy to go over there and tell him, don't worry about it, shake it off. And I thought that was a classy move on his part. That's a tight fraternity, Todd. And story, second and 20. Oh, this is oh, this stuff. Did, did you recruit Siegfried Hall? You know, we actually early? did oh, Bob, have fine. a deep snapper on our team. We called him Cheeks. Uh -huh. it was our deep snapper for three years that played inner hall football at Notre Dame. And you have to understand the culture there. I mean, in the residence halls, first of all, intramurals are huge. It's a big deal. And huge at Notre Dame. And these, these residence halls actually play tackle football. So, I mean, it's been done before. But Mike Leach today now takes a guy that tried out last week at Texas Tech. He kicked the entire day today against Kansas for Mike Leach. In the backfield, this is Terry. Let's take a look a here. Yards. It's a lot different than what it is at Siegfried Hall <laughs> when you're out there and play in the rules. Here's our opening kick today in warm-up. One pretty. He almost he hit, almost the, guy hit the, the guy with the net, yeah. And it didn't get much better on that extra point. Ruffer uh, trying to push Brandon Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Doinks it off the upright. Let me tell you something. I know Notre Dame fans well enough, and they probably are the best fans in the country. But if it doesn't work out, it doesn't matter if you came from Siegfried Hall or you were the <laughs> highest rated kid in the country. Right. Our results now. Brian Smith, the injured player, on the field for Notre, Notre Dame. Smith uh, has a sack already here today. Let's go back downstairs to talk. Hey, Jonesy he just keeps getting better. It's got layers like onions. Now, you remember, this kid is a transfer from William and Mary, and he was there, and we're talking to him, say, hey, well, you played high school? You play? No, never played in high school. And it's only really kicking experience. He kicked as a soccer player one year in high school. This is real sports, golf. He's like a two handicap. Well, hey, Todd, I'm watching him throw that football. You don't have to convince me that he didn't play football <laughs> by the way he's releasing that thing now. Fourth down and Coach six. Coach him up. How did William Mary ever let this kid get away? <laughs> Slipped right through. <laughs> Fun coming up by the Huskies. And, uh, Bob, you talked about the Notre Dame fans and how passionate they are. We've seen a bunch of them that have made the four-hour flight from South Bend to Seattle, Washington. I mean, walking through the parking lot with you today, there was a lot of Bob Davy love going on, man. I mean, I kind of felt like yeah. I was your personal security detail, you know? They, they, they really had a lot of love for Bob Davy. I'm not going to lie to you, folks. Back with more after this. In engineering. Uh, Safeco Field. The Space Needle, the real signature landmark here in the city of Seattle. 33 Notre Dame with the lead. Number 25, Jonas Gray on the run, and he gets the first down. We go back to Wendy. Thank you very much. We told you about Penn State second and goal. Well, this is third and goal. Pat Devlin. In for Daryl Clark, who took a blow to the head on the keeper. This just punch it in. Penn State takes the lead, a low-scoring affair in Columbus. That's where we stand. Uh, look at there, the Rays have tied it up. Game three of the World Series, all knotted up at one after a lengthy rain delay. Mark. All right, Wendy. First down and ten back here. Evan, the quarterback, hands it off to Jonas Gray. And it's going to be interesting with Penn State maybe winning maybe as impressively as most people might have thought in the number three standings review. Alabama at two and leading to Tennessee right now. Tennessee scoring just a few moments ago and uh, Hayes in the barn already for ten. That game was pretty close. Well, at least the final score. Oklahoma State? Yeah. yeah. Second down and seven for the Fighting Irish. Exchange. 
Sharply picks it up and falls forward to the 45 yard line and getting about two. Third down coming up for Notre Dame. Sharply was the starter at various points of the season a season ago. Starting baseball a games. Players. Actually a baseball player, young man from Michigan. Yeah, first baseman on the baseball team. Bob, what is it about Notre Dame and the crossover athlete athletes they've got there? And I'm going to tell you who's going to have a great season. Let's flip over to Big East basketball. Okay. Mike Bray in Notre Dame basketball. That's my preseason pick in a loaded Big East conference. Notre Dame is going to be really good this year. Luke Heron Bode going to be one of the guys they hang their hat on. Third down and six. Toss to Gray. And Gray picks up another Irish first down. With eight and a half minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Jimmy Johnson looks to score his second straight victory and put some distance between himself and fellow championship contenders, Greg Biffle, Jeff Burton, and Carl Edwards. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continuing at Atlanta on ABC Sunday. Coverage begins with NASCAR countdown at 1 o'clock Eastern time. I can only imagine what he is really thinking. I mean, this game tonight is about as bad as I have seen Washington has not crossed their own 44 yard line tonight. This game tonight never in doubt from the first series of the game. Amen. And this is number 25 Jonas Gray again. Gray gets about two on the play under eight minutes to go. No Ford's first road win of the season. I think Notre Dame's in great shape. You know they have Pittsburgh coming to town next week. They go to Boston College. Both those teams lost today. Number 34, Tripper Johnson down for the second time tonight, Mark, the 26-year-old baseball player. Look at this Notre Dame schedule. Pittsburgh was beat by Rutgers today. Boston College was beat by North Carolina. Navy, just because the nature of the wishbone. <laughs> Syracuse has no shot. And then they go to USC. Very favorable schedule. You know, you go back to the first game of the year with just a key play by Bruton on the goal line San Diego State, which they're ready to go up by two scores late in the third quarter. That fumble, right? That was huge. Yeah. That was huge. But they are an improving football team. I don't think they played particularly tonight, but they just such a lead that Mark, I think hard to keep focus for them a little bit. I mean, it was obvious that Football. Well, tough to judge uh, just how well you've done against the Washington team, which is really in a state of turmoil right now. Second down and nine. The quarterback back in the ball game is Evan Sharp. Takes over from Boston. And Sharply hands it off to number 25, Gray, who will lose a couple yards. It's been a while since Notre Dame has shut somebody out. And ironically, the last time they did register a shutout was 2002 against Rutgers when Tyrone Willingham, the head coach. The tradition of this Washington program. This is a great football tradition. Years ago, you know, you go back to really the Don James era, played great defense. Jim Lambright took over. It started to slide a little bit. Rick Neuheisel, and then Keith Gilbertson, but it is falling on lean, lean times, Mike. That pass incomplete. 6.20 to go. West, the intended receiver. Yeah, they, uh, they won that national championship back in 1991. Uh, had some great players. Steve Entman up front, uh, defensive line, playing the NFL. You knew they open up with next year? <laughs> LSU. Easier. LSU. They had a tough schedule this year to start the season. And no game going for it on fourth down. They're two and five on fourth down. Go back to the same play. But short of the first down at the 30 yard line. Golden Tate made the catch. Actually, that was West once again. Time out on the field. Back with more after this. The chain to go here in the fourth quarter. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Todd Harris down in the field. 
Service pass complete. First time that Washington lost midfield tonight, Wendy. First down and 10. This is the deepest penetration of the night. And Fouts going up top. And a chance way wide out of bounds. And go back to that Alabama score. I don't think anybody. We all knew Nick turned around. Yeah. But I don't think anybody thought Mark he around that fast. We had him last. They're 500 Colorado. They were 500. And on the flip side. You talk about heat here in Washington. There is real heat in Tennessee right now in Philip Fulmer. Wow. And next week they travel to to take on South Carolina. Yeah. Huskies call a timeout. And look at that. That says it all, doesn't it? Notre Dame with 24 first downs. Washington Husky Dog. Four. to the sidelines. That's a good one. How important it is. And uh, always some, some really interesting, funny stories. When it comes to a day of spring ball in his freshman year, back was throwing to his wide receivers in he wins 35 40 miles per hour. And his passes weren't spirals. They were end over end. Uh, you know, the coaching staff went back into the locker room and kind of looked at themselves after and uh, Coach Lafino had recruited him was looking at the other coaches and they're looking at him kind of sideways <laughs> like you sure you, you saw this guy play right uh, <laughs> you're an assistant coach <laughs> and you bring a prospect in that prospect because the other staff they're going to get on you hard if that guy out and in Ronnie Fouch's case you know he was an early enrollee that came in in January so he jumps out there in his first spring and he also said he had a new football that had some wax right. on it. Right. Tim LaPon to hide that locker room. Just for his <laughs> on Ronnie Fouch. 19 today. Certainly gotten a lot of help on some drops and avoids this to incomplete at the 32 yard line. Third and ten coming up, and uh, get your weekly dose of NFL news and analysis on ESPN Sunday at 11. Chris Berman and the gang on Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM. Trent Edwards going to be featured this week with the Bills. Then at seven, Chris look at today's highlights and scores during Sports Center Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM and Sports Center on ESPN Sunday. That pass complete. One word for Father Jim Really. Father Jim Really. Legend at Notre Dame. Had, his, had some kids. Rudy oh. movie, but uh, just a great guy. Haven't had a chance to say hello to him in a Just want to say hello to Father Really back there in South Bend. Ben probably uh, watching this game right now as the Irish uh, about to put the lid on this victory. First down and ten. Pass complete to Goodwin. You know, if you're looking for positives so far, anyway, Washington, you say the defense has only given up four points. They average 41 exactly. per game. I mean, if you got to look at the half full scenario at some point. Well, you're reaching, but you're reaching. It's a reach. You're reaching where you're headed. I mean. Uh, their average losses this year have been 14. So you're right, Mark. But the big thing, get on the scoreboard. Fouch. Complete inside the line. Run after the catch. Alabama red zone alert. Gottlieb. Uh, Paul Homer 
fullback. Second down and one to go. scoring affair this game lived up to the height in Columbus we've got about a buck and 10 seconds to go Penn State enjoying a four-point lead on Ohio State over on ABC if they hold on Nittany Lions improved to nine and oh you know, a guy that's done a tremendous job over the years Tom Bradley mm -hmm. the defense leader at Penn State I mean every year they are solid on defense I know him. he's been there about 25 years in the end zone, and it touchdown Goodwin. Goodwin, the only returning wide receiver for the Huskies with a catch last year. A couple jump ball catches against Oregon State. And the Husky Dogs, Mark Jones, are on the scoreboard. Goodwin with his first touchdown catch of the season and of his under three finally get on the scoreboard. Fouch has him given up and he's taken some hits. He's point with, with some dropped on him, but shows you how much he's still invested. Reaction. Goodwin, as I mentioned a moment ago, his first career touchdown pass. Dame leading now 33 to 7. We saw the Irish's uh, remaining. It's a pretty favorable one. Uh, finishes up with the USC at the back end of things, but uh, they're in a nice way right now coming on week and uh, on the verge of improving to five. Fouch uh, get a little with that last touchdown pass. Let's talk about next weekend, Mark. The key games, but that tech. That will be a great shoot. McCoy, Graham, Harold, two Texas high school. Ron will just kick it deep. Do the onside kick. You'd let it all go here. Let it go. Got to empty out the cupboard at some point. Who's on who's left in the house? They're booing. You just can't. This one booted around. Inside the five. This week are so tough places like Texas they said after this won the national championship with Vince Young Matt Brown because he could only quarterback oh. like Vince Young move he could post Young which is amazing but Colt McCoy he's making him forget a little bit about Vince you know about there, there's some people in this world and you find a lot of passionate people Blinded by their passions. If a guy walks on water, they say, oh, he can't swim. And that's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Two and a half minutes to go. wonder how your group out there on the big dog, they've headed back home across Lake Washington by now. The party hasn't stopped. You know, a little barbecue going still, or throw a little more salmon on the grill. What a great advantage. Please reset the game clock to 2-3-0. Two, 2-3-0. Three, zero. Two, three, zero. Thank you. <laughs> Should be at 40 seconds. We got a vigilant, a vigilant group watching, watching that clock. Make everything is still buttoned about, up. Does this country turn into a text <laughs> frenzy? I mean, it's like that's all you see are people cell text phones, messaging yeah. cell phones. Well, coaches can't do it anymore to recruit. Isn't that You're one right of the rules they that. brought in? You're right, but you can fly to <laughs> like Pete Carroll and Charlie Weiss. And <laughs> 
These girls. Now, do you think they're real about what Tyrone and how this program is going to move forward? I tell you what, they're probably saying we're going to get Washington State. Washington State is tough times, right? Come down in five. This is Jonas Gray. Gray brought down. About the third. Notre Dame coming off of that loss a couple of weeks ago. Five and two. You know, Tyrone really, Willingham's team going to fall to zero and seven. You look at the statistics of that North Carolina game. You know Notre Dame turned it over five times, but they really outgained Carolina 400 and some to 300 yards. Really could have won that. Lawson had a costly interception there in the fourth quarter. Third and. Showing a nice burst. Big flag thrown. Gray is brought down at the 27 yard line. Bob had a chance to. Holding on the offense. Number 21. Penalty. Third down. Huh. No, Bob. Charlie Weiss, the present. His predecessor, Tyrone Willingham, expressed his thoughts about his special times at Notre Dame. What's your of being on campus there? Spent eight years there, and so many. In '95, Lou uh, Holt became really the interim coach there for for the mid part of that season. I mean, that was an amazing experience right there. You know, certainly coaching for Lou for three years, learned so much. Great eight years. I can look back. You know, I can still think of the smell and you know, what it smelled like in that stadium. You know, what I miss most are just those games. on the back. Coach, good to see you. Uh, hearing a lot of that on the way to the game here today. And, uh, for Tyrone Willingham, conversely, wondering perhaps what lies ahead. You know what he's ahead. thinking right now, Mark, he's thinking, what am I going to say to this football team? How am I going to address my football team and continue to be a leader? That's it. This one is cooked. The ladies sliced the Irish winning it.